All right, it's a couple days later. It's time to cook some steaks. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is go through some of the equipment that I have collected to do sous vide, or as I call it, the food jacuzzi, a little bit more efficiently. Uh, first of all, I have a large Lexan tub. Um, if you're lucky on eBay, Amazon, wherever, probably can pull one of these for 20 bucks or less, but let's be honest, if you go to a food service or restaurant service, they're gonna charge you 50, 60 bucks for this thing. Uh, you don't need like the best, most space age material. You just need one that's gonna be heat resistant. Uh, so look to make sure that it's going to survive boiling water because it's possible that you will boil water in this by accident. We'll get to that. Um, this is the actual sous vide immersion circulator. Uh, it's got a heating element, moves the water around everything. It's got a little clamp on the back. Uh, you may need to do some creative alteration of your Lexan tub to get this over that lip and get it to seal because uh, most of these are designed to go on like a large pot. Uh, this might be too thick for it. You might have to cut a little notch out or something, which is what I had to do on this one. Uh, I've got about phew, close to five gallons of water in here. Um, if you look at your emergency circulator at your sous vide, there should be a line that says minimum. All right. So you need to make sure that the water never goes below that line. Uh, depending on how large of objects you're going to be putting in here, I would say fill to that level. And then when you put your steaks and everything else in, the water level will come up and you should be okay. Um, other things to consider. I have a towel on the table right now. Uh, usually this is in my, uh, my utility room and it's sitting on top of a metal dryer or washer. Um, I'm just putting the towel there, not just to give it a little bit more insulation because that metal is gonna wick away a lot of your heat out of the bottom of your vessel otherwise. So just have something there. Uh, also consider, depending on how hot your temperature is, if you're doing vegetables, getting up to 175, 185 degrees, be sure you're not setting this on top of uh, you know, cheap Formica or something, there is a possibility of warping or discoloring because of this hot vessel sitting on that countertop. So be aware of that. Uh, all right, so what do we got uh, on top of that? We've got the steaks that we vacuum packed a couple days ago. Um, these have had a wonderful chance. All of the salt that was on here has now penetrated all the way to the middle of the meat. So it's going to be perfectly seasoned all the way through. Uh, I've had them sitting out on the counter for a little bit. They don't have to be room temperature, but you know, pull them out of the fridge before you're actually gonna throw them in here. I think it helps. Um, you're gonna to wanna to have a large pitcher. Uh, that's not only for filling up initially, but also top up. Uh, and then as you get into other things, you may also want a piece of siphon hose or something so you can pull water off. If you put a little, really big hunk of meat or something in here, you may get to the point where it's actually too full. Uh, and there is a, a max line on this as well. You don't need to go above that. Although conveniently, the max line on this is right at the surface of this. So um, I can't go over max without making a mess. Uh, I also just have a bowl for you know pulling out or putting some of my materials in. Uh, something else you may want to get into if you're going to do this a lot is a sous vide rack. Um, you can buy these pretty cheap. Uh, there's all sorts of different designs. This one folds out uh, and it has a whole bunch of little inserts. And the whole idea here is to keep whatever you're cooking upright and uh, basically suspended in the water column so that it has even heat all the way around. Uh, and that's going to help it cook better. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball this. Mm, I think I want these a little bit tighter, so I'm going to move this one over. Now something else to consider is depending on what you are cooking, uh, especially if you get into higher temperature stuff, vegetables and whatnot, they will off gas and that is going to create buoyancy and that is going to want to float up out of your uh, water and anything that's above the surface is not going to uh, it's not going to cook evenly it's not going to cook as efficiently anyway uh, and i usually have a couple extra ones i'll just throw them on the top so i'm going to go ahead and throw these in uh, i've got my sous vide set at 135 degrees 
which is just warm enough that I don't want to leave my hands in there too long. Um, depending on who you talk to, they're like, oh, well, you only want to do like 125 or 130. I go to 135 just because I want to get up there. I want to actually get into medium rare, not like full bloody rare. It's going to look very underdone when it comes out because of the way it cooks. But the other thing to consider is that if you're used to cooking on a grill or in an oven or whatever else, there is no carryover on this. So whatever temperature it gets up to, that's the temperature it's going to stay at. So if you want your done internal temperature to be 135, this has got to be set to 135 or you'll never get there. Um, so this is already set up. Um, I've got a little slotted spoon, which you'll see in a, a later. I'm going to actually use that because I need to pull out my top insulation. These are, uh, they're like very tiny ping pong balls or little poly balls. They're hollow. Um, this is going to do two things. First, it's going to help keep heat in, which means that this heating element is not going to have to run as often or as long. And secondly, it's going to drastically reduce evaporation, which if you're going to be doing longer cooks, like, uh, for example, I will do a pork butt and leave it in there for 36 or 48 hours. Uh, I want to make sure that I've got this topped up and I don't have to worry about it shutting off because it actually evap evaporates and goes below the minimum level. So, uh, but for this, it's, I'm not worried about evaporation. This is only going to be in here for two or three hours. Uh, but I do want to keep that heat in. Um, so, yeah, we are ready to go. Turn it on so that you didn't have to listen to the hum while I was talking, and we'll see you in a couple hours.